Hello and welcome to the second part of News Click's interview with Ambassador M K Bhadrakumar on the raging issue that is Afghanistan. In the first part, we looked at the situation of the Taliban, the position of the Ashraf Ghani government, and in this part, we're going to be taking a look at the role of regional players like India and Pakistan, as well as the United States, which will continue to have a key role in the future. Uh, so, another question would, of course, be for many of your our viewers would really be regarding India's position on this issue because India has been in some various ways a stakeholder for a very long time but we do now see that it seems to be caught in a bit of a bind regarding how to engage who to engage and how to engage especially when it comes to the taliban so could you maybe quickly take us through what are the options before india right now and what has been its approach see india's uh, mistake fundamentally is this that you know that for the last uh, i can tell you not this was not the case when i was heading the pakistan Afghanistan uh, Iran division in the early 1990s but from the mid 1990s onward there has been a drift toward uh, Afghanistan policy being a subplot of the Pakistan policy you know this is unfortunate this is uh, largely in the in the case of uh, you know the security establishment coming to the fore and uh, entering the driving seat of the Afghan policy uh and uh, the temptation might have been there that to use afghanistan to leverage the pakistani policies you know policy policies with regard to cross border terrorism uh you know it's very logical that you know people in their naivety would have done it you know but you know the point is the india pakistan uh, melting pot aldrin is already so overflowing that it was a uh, crass stupidity to have introduced another complicating factor in it now if uh, we have to therefore first of all we have to distance ourselves from this and we have to take a view of pakistan as a responsible regional power and then begin to think in terms of intrinsically that country's security and stability because everything emanates out of that and how we can then bring ourselves into a positive frame of mind how we can contribute to that as a responsible regional power and in our own self respect so if we can do that i think uh, it will be a huge of course it will be a clean break from the past but then many doors will open i think pakistan will welcome it taliban will welcome it and international community will heave a sigh of relief what happened uh, what why it looks gloomy today is because india india was transfixed in this paradigm uh, for which you know the compass is set by the security establishment so the fellow travelers of the security establishment in the indian strategic community and unfortunately even uh, responsible sections of the indian media had a black and white picture a one dimensional view of the afghan situation and from that uh from that corner uh, there was no way that india could explore you know uh, tantalizing possibilities to move towards the center stage of the afghan uh, chessboard you know and that is what happened and uh, much time was lost i think a, an opening to taliban is uh, late by almost one year at least because the taliban is today got uh, international recognition all around and the biggest example is a uh, report by the voice of america commenting on this that the regional states are dealing more with the taliban you know than with the government in kabul you know that everyone is recognizing the taliban accepting it as you know the as, as a genuine afghan force and here you know we have our uh, innocents abroad in india you know are quibbling over it how legitimate are the taliban a footage has come from the cnn that the taliban is executing prisoners hey, is it like making an omelet fighting an insurgency who will kill your adversaries the whole name the game here is to stop it and when you can't not stopping it when you're not contributing to stopping it you are only you know creating reasons by you know uh, <laughs> highlighting it so you know uh, the the picture of the taliban has been uh, presented in such a grotesque fashion and uh, this is where an understanding is also lacking is very very unfortunate that a country like india which has had uh, 
centuries of interaction with Islam and, and cannot understand political Islam. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it narrows down to that. It is, a, it is a huge cultural deficiency on the part of India today that it has lost its eclectic mind, you know, because uh, I know this because, you know, this is part of the problem all the time. In the early 1990s, how difficult it was for us to convince the security establishment that we should open a line to the Afghan Mujahideen. And I can tell you this, if we didn't have a prime minister like Narasimha Rao with a, such a level of erudition, we would not have been able to push that policy through single-handedly. Everyone in North Block, South Block, and in other parts of, the, of, of, of uh, uh, Delhi, you know, uh, involved in security uh, or foreign policy concerns, uh, opposed us. And it was, uh, you know, the, um, it was the powerful will of uh, someone like Jane Dixit as foreign secretary uh, that, you know, that we put this across to Mr. Rao nonetheless. And it goes to his credit that he held an interministerial meeting because he felt troubled himself and he, he had an interministerial meeting to discuss this. The same situation is happening today, in my opinion. And here, you know, the political leadership has a big role to play. And that comes only if they are erudite. Erudite enough to understand the Afghan history and the flow of Afghan history, their culture, and the kind of people we are dealing with. And then we will get a perspective on the Taliban, which will be completely at variance with these wrong notions that most of our people in the media and think tanks are carrying. Absolutely. So in this context, of course, also wanted to ask you about another question which you had hinted at earlier, which was the role of Pakistan itself. You talked about how Pakistan also has an interest in uh, regional stability for its own internal reasons. So could you maybe elaborate a bit on that? Because the question of, say, suppose the Taliban gaining more influence, what kind of impact it will have on Pakistan's internal situation has been something that isn't very key. But Prashant, you know, the, uh, the real tragedy comes when uh, we start believing in our own propaganda. You know, and I, know, I can see that in the last five to 10 years, an interesting transformation has been going on in Pakistan. And I give full credit to China. Ultimately, they have been instrumental in it by offering to Pakistan a different future. And, you know, we are unable to understand this. We, are unable, we refuse to understand it rather, because it is not in consonance with the narrative that we have created both with regard to China and to Pakistan, and about Pakistan. Now, therefore, you know, the, the whole logic of uh, this is too much of geopolitics in the air. And I think it's not good for you. It is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's making India fall sick. It's not, uh, it's preventing India from thinking straight. Pakistan has got the point that geoeconomics is the crux of the matter today in the 21st century in world politics. And uh, a country with uh, such abandoned intellectual resources as India fails to understand it. We are dabbling in the great game in the international, uh, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the geopolitical plane. So when Pakistan has got this opportunity on a platter from China, it has got uh, every prospect to follow a different uh, path and uh, become a prosperous country uh, a middle income country in the near future and a prosperous country. You know, it's a country with abandoned resources. It was led astray by General Zia ul Haq. But, uh, you know, a comeback is always possible and is necessary, and a lot of responsible people, including, I think, the military leadership, recognize it. So, uh, an adjustment was necessary from our point of view, therefore, in our mental framework towards it. Uh, because then we would have understood the potentials of the situation for us. We fail to do that. But from Pakistani point of view, they are with India or without India going to go forward. You know, you look at the signs, the cross-border terrorism has virtually ended in JNK. And if at all we have a problem, it is the problem which is of our own making, which is the alienation of the people. And we are unable to, you know, uh, 
increasingly we are unable to pillory Pakistan as a state sponsoring terrorism. That is one thing. Secondly, we all speak about multipolarity, but you find that uh, Pakistan has exploited multipolarity, one of the few countries other than Turkey or Iran in our neighborhood or Vietnam, which is, uh, which is able to you know, operate in this multipolar milieu uh, to extract maximum advantage out of it you know, for its own national interests. So, you know, it has uh, diversified its uh, relationships. It is no longer a puppet of Saudi Arabia. It has a lifeline to Pakistan, uh, to Iran. Uh, its uh, strong relationship with Turkey has uh, transformed. It is no longer a relationship between Pashas. It is a different kind of a relationship now, as I can see. Uh, they have uh, gone the extra league to forge a relationship with uh, Russia. The relationship with China has transformed but as they have enriched their relationship and it still remains the mainstay of Pakistan's foreign policy. And therefore, you know, either, even in the Central Asian region, you know, they have uh, spread a network widely and uh, they, they do not look at uh, Pakistan as a nuisance anymore and a, and a headache for the regional stability, the Central Asian states. And um, uh, from that point of view, you can see that Pakistan's interests clearly lie in stabilizing the situation in Afghanistan. But now, of course, if Pakistan stabilizes, uh, succeeds on that path with the other regional states, uh, then India will have a bigger problem. Because what will be the excuse for India, the alibi for India, for not to discuss Kashmir issue? So you see, Pakistan's path is actually very logical also. It is very logical and I think it is going to be extremely dangerous for India if this path succeeds, this path of peace, because then it comes to a situation where India really looks like a, a, an Israel in South Asia, you know. So you see, this is, this is, this is, the, this is, the, this is the specter that is haunting India. So therefore, you know, the Pakistani uh, shift the transformation in Pakistan, the new thinking there must be taken very, very seriously because then the game will slip out of our hands otherwise. Even uh, those countries in the West which are uh, quiet about it because of their warm feelings towards India will have to uh, take a stance and say, please talk. You know, you cannot uh, go on this path. So I have a feeling that that is the problem. But then how do we talk? Because if we talk, it goes, it grades against so many templates of the domestic politics of the ruling elites. So, you know, Pakistan is also part of India's uh, domestic politics. So, it's, it's, and, uh, it's, and then it comes to the question of opening the Pandora's box in terms of relations with China. And this entire narrative which we have created will have to be redone. You know, so uh, I don't think the Indian leadership is either willing or capable of addressing it. And this is actually the predicament of uh, regional security in South Asia today. Right. And Ambassador, finally, the last question, which is regarding the role of the United States. As you have written, the departure from the Bagram Air Base is likely to go into folklore, considering how it was carried out you know, at, at, at the dead of the night, leaving so many resources. Many people also commenting on how it resembled Vietnam. But do we actually see the United States continue to uh, be a player on the ground in Afghanistan because they are leaving some forces, the Pentagon contractors are going to be there, uh, there are US bases in the region, you mentioned how, there are US, at least in West Asia, there are US bases. So uh, do we see them still trying to maybe influence developments in the region or are they uh, cut out for the near future? You know, Prashant, the... Uh... The past is past, and I do not want to get so much into it as to why the war failed and all that kind of thing, and why this sort of a departure from Bagram phase, Bagram base was uh, became necessary, you know, for very sound reasons. Because you know, who will want to you know withdraw troops in full daylight with people throwing rotten eggs at them, lining the streets, you know? So you know, it's a uh, Taliban wouldn't have. Uh, trouble them on this withdrawal because withdrawal is useful for the Taliban. But the people, the popular feeling would have been within one hour, they ransacked the Bagram base, you know, they looted 
took away laptops and cosmetics and everything, you know. So, you know, um, Americans have a vital role to play. And it will be wrong on our part to think in terms of in, in black and white. Because uh, both China and Russia, and to some extent even Iran, depending on the progress of the Iran deal, which is, you know, brewing there in the background, and I think it is going to work because Biden is keen on it. And if it works in the lifting of sanctions, then Iran is a different Iran that we are dealing with. So even to some extent, Iran and certainly Pakistan uh, will want a continued American role in Afghanistan. The quarrel, the big quarrel has been only about the war and the senselessness of this war and what the war has done to the alchemy of regional security and stability in this region. And it's a spillover effect, likely spillover effect for other countries, Russia, China, Iran, and so on. Now you see, Iran has issued a statement that the level of the IRGC <laughs> expressing comfort over the border security with Afghanistan, following the takeover of border crossings by the Taliban. Now, you know, we must note these things very seriously. What does it imply, you know? So, you know, uh, everyone knows that the war is not good. War must end and uh, Taliban must be accommodated and a new future must be choreographed. Uh, in that, this country's peace essentially depends on the international community's engagement on humanitarian side, on reconstruction side, on economic cooperation. China will help, but China alone cannot do that. This is an intolerable burden for any country to assume, you know. And uh, Russia doesn't have the wherewithal. Iran, India, Pakistan, they don't have the wherewithal. It's, it's not a matter of building a few bridges and culverts. You know, it's a rebuilding an entire economy which is completely shattered. And therefore, a, a big engagement, international engagement is necessary. And then the Americans will have to give the, take the lead. And uh, everyone understands it. And uh, it will be wrong on our part to imagine that Russia, China, and Iran and all are ganging up together and uh, taking a whip and, you know, driving out the Americans from the region. No, far from it. The fact of the matter is that the Western countries also, responsible countries in the West, like Germany and so on, would also realize that uh, a replay like in the 1990s shouldn't happen because, uh, you know, refugee flow and all that it entailed for Europe is very, very much there for us to see. So they would also be telling uh, Afghanistan is a major topic tomorrow when uh, Angela Merkel uh, goes to the White House, you know, to uh, meet uh, Biden. Uh, it has been listed as a major topic there. And uh, uh, therefore, you know, I think the American rule will continue. The American rule is uh, considered necessary. Now, I'll come to a certain point here, which is extremely important, and listen carefully. I see a shift in the American attitude toward Russia. And I see also, a, I sense also, uh, the incipient signs of an engagement beginning on a different plane with China. Uh, last night I was listening to a, a, a video recording of a, a one hour presentation with Queen A with um, Kurt Campbell, the most pivotal man in the Biden administration on China. I put it on the Facebook. You know, the uh, there is absolutely no trace of any interest on the part of the Americans to take Taiwan to a flashpoint. There is no discussion about a war with China. And he brushed aside the notions of a new Cold War. And he was talking about trade and engagement and so on. And introduced, of course, China as a main challenge still figures in the American uh, matrix. But how to tackle that matrix, that is the point. And when it comes to Russia, you find the similar trends already, but a little further ahead after Geneva's uh, summit. 
it is by opening of the humanitarian corridor into uh, syria and then uh, uh, lavrentiev the kremlin's uh, envoy on syria uh, announcing acknowledging that talks are going on between moscow and washington with regard to the withdrawal of american troops from syria and the russians are getting into the cockpit of the political process in a more energetic way in the post pandemic scenario all this suggests that uh, an understanding is uh, being worked out on syria now you know uh, similarly you know you find also that uh, when you know when a big ship turns around it has to be over a big arc you know and uh, unless you are very very discernible you may not notice the movement i i feel that that is what it is because biden is quite clear about his priorities you know his number one priorities today definitely are i mean not not only number one or overwhelmingly internal matters there was a statement from moscow yesterday uh, clearly indicating that russia is not looking for a fight with the us over cuba and that is because uh, i'm planning to write about it today and that is because uh, the uh, russians do not think that americans are into any dirty games in cuba and that this uh, confusion is uh, genuinely out of uh, socio economic problems uh, brought by the pandemic and others which have become acute but it is not uh, something um, connected with the regime change at all in other words the cuban government will handle this situation but the important point is about not blaming the americans you know so you see and we find on the other side also the uh, discussion in america going on about uh, how to uh, go back to the default position of the obama era you know uh, and uh, uh, rolling back the things that trump did so you know all these things are actually we cannot in the international uh, plane we cannot isolate one topic and discuss you know and a topic like afghanistan where all the major protagonists big powers and most small powers are converging you know because they are stakeholders there uh, without taking into account the, uh, the bigger signs around so i think the indian discourse must uh, must change this is not a battlefield this is not going to be a battlefield now uh, between the big powers the afghan situation it is going to be a place where there will be an attempt to harmonize and they, it's very important for india to understand because uh, india must shouldn't also miss this train uh, this train on the diplomatic track because then we'll be left back in the railway station all by ourselves with no one to carry even our luggage you know uh, no porter in sight nobody around you know this is what it can come to so i wrote in fact on afghanistan also that we must try to harmonize very quickly because uh, this is taking place and uh, in the context of all that i explain hamid kasai abdullah in uh, doha and all that and the bigger picture that i see emerging uh, biden has Uh, established that america is back hmm. the question is now what does america do with this return journey that is the point and there is an extremely experienced politician and i don't think that he wants to create a legacy where he is locking horns with china locking horns with russia stalemates all over the place uh, forever wars in other places and so on and so forth and you know he is that is not his uh, so uh, there are churnings let me put it like that succinctly put there are churnings in the international situation which will be of profound consequence and even with regard to our relations with china russia pakistan this is going to be important and we will see this playing out to some extent in afghanistan also absolutely thank you so much ambassador for talking to us that's all we have time for today keep watching newsclick